What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another episode brought to you by the League FFB. Today, we're going to be talking about my must start and my must sit players at the running back and the wide receiver position here this week as we approach week 11 of the fantasy football season. As always, these are matchups that I really like this week, and I think matchups that are a little bit riskier. So, you should be having second thoughts about starting these players. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button. But without wasting any more time, let's hop right into today's video and let's start talking about these must start and must sit players. All right, so kicking it off with my must start wide receivers, I want to kick it off with George Pickens of the Pittsburgh Steelers. George Pickens has a fantastic matchup here this week. He plays against the Baltimore Ravens, who are currently giving up the most points to fantasy football wide receivers in a game that has a 48 point projected game total. Now, the Pittsburgh Steelers, they are underdogs in this one. They are plus three, so they should be throwing the football a little bit to keep up. Now, the story with George Pickens so far this year has been a little bit of inconsistency, but that was really at the beginning of the year when Justin Fields was the quarterback for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Ever since Russell Wilson has taken over as the starting quarterback, it seems like things have been trending up for George Pickens. He now has two top five finishes at the wide receiver position, one of them in week seven and the other one in week 10. I think this week, just based on the matchup and how many points Baltimore is giving up, plus the upgrade in quarterback to Russell Wilson over the last couple of weeks, including a 28% target share and 12 total red zone targets over the course of the year for George Pickens. This is a smash play. And when you look at average fantasy points above expectation, which basically tells you how many points these defenses are giving up in comparison to the expected fantasy football points. The Baltimore Ravens are ranked 32nd, giving an average of 11 fantasy points per game more above expectation. That is a massive, massive gap from the next best team, which is 5.7. So that should tell you just how bad the Baltimore Ravens have been. This is going to be a smash matchup for George Pickens. And if you do decide to play George Pickens in your matchup this week, which again, I am strongly suggesting you do, I think this is a guy who can definitely flirt with another top five finish here in week 11. Now, moving on to my next must start wide receiver, I want to talk about Calvin Ridley of the Tennessee Titans. Now, they play against the Minnesota Vikings, who are currently ranked 30th against the wide receiver position. And even though this game does not have a high projected game total, it is only 39 and a half points, the Titans are six point underdogs in this matchup. So we do expect a lot of passing in order for them to keep up. Now, over the last couple of weeks, since the DeAndre Hopkins departure, Calvin Ridley has had two top 10 finishes at the wide receiver position, finishing as the number three overall wide receiver last week. I think this matchup against Minnesota is another great matchup for Calvin Ridley to continue building upon. And just looking at his target share on the year, this is another wide receiver who has a massive target share of 26.3%. He's not necessarily getting all of the red zone targets. And in the red zone, it does seem like they want to run the football with Tony Pollard. But again, when we're looking at that points allowed above expectation, Minnesota is a bottom five team, allowing 3.6 fantasy points above expectation each and every week. So this is another good matchup to target when you're looking at that overall fantasy points given up and the points above expectation given up. Now, if you do decide to play Calvin Ridley, which I do strongly suggest you do, I do not believe he's going to be a top five finish like I do think George Pickens can be. But I do think that this is a guy who is a definite safe wide receiver to play for you in your fantasy football league and a guy who should definitely finish within the top 25. So I'm definitely plugging him into my lineup with confidence. But now that we've talked about the wide receivers, let's talk about the running backs that I think he should be playing. I want to start with David Montgomery of the Detroit Lions. Now, he gets a great matchup against the Jacksonville Jaguars, who currently rank 28th against the position. And this matchup has a 47-point projected game total, so there should be a lot of points to go around. And not only that, the Jacksonville Jaguars are projected to be 14-point underdogs, with the Lions being 14-point favorites, meaning we expect them to run the damn football in the second half because they are going to be blowing out this Jacksonville Jaguars team. Now, looking at David Montgomery, he has been very consistent over the last couple of weeks. It's been about a month since he's finished inside of the top 10. I think he might have a chance to do it here this week just with the added touchdown opportunities that he's probably going to be getting here on the goal line. And then looking at that average fantasy points above expectation, again, this Jacksonville Jaguars team is ranked 29th there, giving up about 4.3 points above expectation each and every week. So there should be lots of points to go around for the Detroit Lions running backs. Now, if you do decide to plug in David Montgomery into your lineup, again, you probably should be doing that. I think this is a guy who 
can flirt with RB1 numbers and could be a top 12 running back at the end of the week. And now moving on to my next running back I want to talk about, I want to talk about Kareem Hunt of the Kansas City Chiefs. Again, this is another great matchup for the running back position. They play the Buffalo Bills, who are currently ranked 29th against fantasy football running backs in a game that has a 46 point projected game total in a game where the Kansas City Chiefs are two point underdogs. So we do expect this to be a very competitive game with potentially quite a few points against a bad defense. Now, Kareem Hunt has accounted for 81.7% of the team's rushing attempts so far this year. He also has an 8.8% target share of the receiving targets. I think this is a player who is going to have a lot more usage here in this matchup against the Buffalo Bills because that does seem to be the weak point of the Buffalo Bills defense. When you're looking at points above expectation, as we've been talking about, the Buffalo Bills are ranked 31st right now, giving about 4.8 points above expectation. And there've been some rumors about Isaiah Pacheco potentially coming back into the lineup. It does not sound like he's going to be back this week. So I do think we can start Kareem Hunt with confidence. If you are playing him here this week, I think this is a high end running back too. And a guy who can definitely be a top 15 running back here at the end of the week when it's all said and done. But now that we've talked about players that I like their matchups and players that I would be starting, let's talk about some players with risky matchups and players I'd consider sitting here this week. I want to kick it off at the wide receiver position. We're going to talk about Jalen Waddle of the Miami Dolphins. Now he gets a tough matchup against Las Vegas, who's currently ranked sixth against fantasy football wide receivers in a game that has a 44 point projected game total and the Miami Dolphins are seven point favorites. So they might just be running the football in the second half because they are going to be beating the Las Vegas Raiders, or at least that's the way it's been projected. Now looking at Jalen Waddle, it has been a very rough year for Jalen Waddle. He has one top 20 finish so far this year that was in week one against the Jacksonville Jaguars and then he has virtually been outside of the top 36 wide receivers every single week for the remainder of the year I do not believe that this is a week where he's going to be able to get this one back on track when you look at the Las Vegas Raiders and you look at that points above expectation they're currently the third best defense right now when it comes to that PAE right now they're averaging about negative 4.8 points above expectation so this does not profile to be a great matchup for Jalen Waddle. also it does seem like the Miami Dolphins are a little bit in a slump right now the offense doesn't seem to be humming as much in the passing game as they have in years past so Jalen Waddle, he's a player that I'm a little bit nervous about right now as we go into the week and I think if you're considering playing Jalen Waddle right now this week this is a player who I currently have just on the fringe of my top 36 wide receivers he's a guy I'm viewing as a low end wide receiver three and maybe not even going to end up in my top top 36 when the week's all said and done so there could be quite a few other options that you can play above Jalen Waddle here this week now moving on to another risky wide receiver I want to talk about Jordan Addison of my Minnesota Vikings Addison gets a matchup this week against the Tennessee Titans who are currently ranked first against fantasy football wide receivers now Vegas is projecting 39 and a half total points to be scored in this game so it is a lower projected game total we also view the Minnesota Vikings as six point favorites in this matchup so there is a chance that they're going to be running the football later in this game Jordan Addison is only averaging about 16.8% of the team's receiving targets so far this year, and he's barely being used in the red zone so far this year. Jordan Addison has been very inconsistent. He obviously started the year off with an ankle injury, and then he kind of had a good week there in week four against Green Bay, where he scored two touchdowns. He also had a good week in week nine against the Indianapolis Colts, but every other week, it's been very hard for us to trust Jordan Addison. Right now, Sam Darnold is also a little bit banged up in this lineup, so it's going to be tough to trust anybody in this Vikings offense other than maybe Justin Jefferson and even TJ Hawkins. Hawkinson, but when I'm looking at PAE so far this year, I'm looking at this Tennessee Titans defense. They're averaging negative 4.4 PAE, so it's another tough matchup again. It shows in the overall points allowed and the PAE. And so I think if you're debating on whether or not you should be starting Jordan Addison, he's a player that I'm only playing if I need him to. He's outside of my top 40 wide receiver so far this week, and I think that there's plenty of other options to play other than Jordan Addison because he is very much a boom bust option, and this matchup profiles to be more towards that bust side of things. Now moving on over to my running backs that I think are a little bit riskier. Let's talk about Tony Pollard. He's a player that I'm probably trying to keep out of my lineup if I can afford to this week. He has a very tough matchup against the Minnesota Vikings. Now the Minnesota Vikings we talked about, they are bad against wide receivers. They've been very good against running backs, currently the fourth best against those fantasy football running backs. We talked about the projected game total being a little bit lower and we talked about the Tennessee Titans being six point underdogs, meaning they might have to abandon the run game. Now Tony Pollard does have some receiving upside and he has been pretty good this year. I think the issue is he's been playing through a little bit of an injury. He's been a little bit banged up. Last week, he fell outside of the top 24 running backs. I think this week he could flirt with falling outside of the top 24 running backs again. When I'm looking at Minnesota and their points above expectations,
expectation. They are averaging about negative 4.7 points. So this is the third toughest matchup when you look at points above expectation. They are the fourth toughest when it's points allowed. All of these things considered banged up Tony Pollard, bad offense, underdogs, all of these things. It's not a great recipe for Tony Pollard. So again, I might be looking at some other options. You might not be able to look at other options because the running back position is just a little bit scarce this week. I currently have Tony Pollard just on the fringe of my top 24 running backs. So a low end running back two here in this week's rankings. So if you have some other options, I would play them, but he's a guy that you might be forced to play anyways, just because of the running back injuries and bye week. And now my last and final risky start at the running back position, I'm going to be looking at Travis etn jr and travis etn he gets a matchup against the detroit lions who are currently ranked fifth against fantasy football running backs now this game does have that good projected game total we talked about that being 47 points so there should be a lot of points to go around also, we talked about this being 14-point underdogs for Jacksonville in this matchup, so there should be a lot of passing opportunities for Travis Etienne to rack up some PPR points. The issue is Travis Etienne hasn't looked good this year. It's been a very down year for Travis Etienne. He's only accounted for about 50% of the team's rushing attempts. He's only getting about 11% of the team's receiving targets, and he only has four five-zone attempts and two five-zone touchdowns over the course of the year, so he's really not being used on the goal line, and this is because Tank Bigsby has been mixed in as well. Now, Tank Bigsby is also dealing with an injury so that's something we're gonna have to keep an eye on as we get closer to Sunday however I want to go back and I want to look at that PAE the points above expectation right now Detroit is a top five matchup averaging negative 3.8 points against that position group so this is again a tough matchup for Travis Etienne and this Jaguars team being led by Mac Jones does not give you really any confidence in the offense at all so if you're looking for some running back options I think you can look at a bunch of other options other than Travis Etienne he is a player who is currently right around my running back 30 in my rankings so really only a flex play maybe a mid-level running back three type of play but again it's going to depend on your team it's going to depend on your roster so you may be forced to play him but I'm not expecting anything major from Travis Etienne here this week especially if Tank Bigsby is in the lineup so there you have it folks there are four of my must start players and four of my riskier maybe must sit players here as we approach week 11 of the fantasy football season as always if you enjoyed today's video make sure you hit that like button also make sure you are subscribed to the channel that way you don't miss our start sit streams where I do my Q&A's on Fridays Saturdays and Sundays throughout the weekend also make sure you guys go join the discord the discord is free to join so there is no risk in doing that but with all of that out of the way i have nothing else for you today so i will see you on our next episode but until then peace out